What to be to Rob here bringing you another episode of Detroit Become Human. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. We are nearing closer and closer to the end of the story. This is going to be an extra long first chapter here. It'll be that and another one, but I'll see you guys at the end of this chapter. They've been conducting raids all over the city. Everybody's on edge after what happened yesterday. It's gonna be all right. We're almost With there. With all androids being turned over to the authorities, the country is grinding to a halt. Hospitals and schools are closing, water cuts, blackouts, and network failures are expected. Maybe most worrying of all, our armed forces have lost two-thirds of their effective personnel. How about some music instead? A little further on that way, there's a large freighter called Jericho. When you get there, find Marcus. He will help you. The last bus for the border leaves at midnight. You absolutely have to be on it. You'll be safer on the other side. It's not much, but it's a start. My brother lives in Ontario. I've given you his address. He'll be able to hide you until things calm down. You're a very brave little girl, Alice. You deserve to be happy. Thank you for everything, Rose. Let me know when you make it over there, all right? And be careful. Take care of them. Come on, girls. Better not hang around. We have a bus to catch. We've got to find a warm place for Alice. This is extremely alarming. They're conducting raids in the morass. We've got to destroy these bastards before they kill Marcus. We'll have to choke the thing and then we torch them. I mean, do you think this fucker was watching over my kids? They, they rushed the police and they, they slaughtered them. Those things are monsters. Monsters, I tell you. Following the android crisis and the neutralization of all military androids, How do you feel? I'm hot and cold at the same time. Stay with her. I'll try to find this Marcus. The last bus is in two hours. And the terminal's on the other side of town. We haven't got much time. We'll leave as soon as we have passports. Carol. There's something I have to tell you. 
It's about Alice. We'll have lots of time to talk on the bus. I'll be back. Stay with Alice. There's a bus leaving for the border in less than two hours, and we need passports. No, Detroit's under curfew. There's soldiers everywhere. They're rounding up all the androids and sending them to camps. Maybe you should stay here a while. Maybe you're right. You might be safer here until things calm down. One of our people used to work in the State Department. He has electronic passports he can easily modify. I'll have him get them to you. Thank you. You said you're with a little girl, right? You know that humans hate us. Why are you protecting her? She needs me. And I need her. It's as simple as that. Now that you know she's one of us, Alice loves you, Kara. She loves you more than anything in the world. She became the little girl you wanted, and you became the mother she needed. Forgetting who you are, to become what someone needs you to be. Maybe that's what it means to be alive.
We're short on blue blood and biocomponents. Our wounded are shutting down, and there's nothing we can do. Humans are conducting raids in all the big cities, and they're taking androids to camps to destroy them. That's all our fault. None of this... All we did was show them who we really are. I don't want war, but I'd rather die free than live as a slave. It was a peaceful march, and you chose to attack. Now hundreds of humans and androids are dead. You reap what you sow. You saw what they did to us back there. It doesn't matter what we do. We either fight for our freedom or we die in silence. This is getting us nowhere. He's right. All that matters now is what we do next. Marcus? Dialogue is the only way. I will go alone, try to talk to them one last time. Don't do this, Marcus. They'll kill you. Maybe. But North, I have to try. If I don't come back, lay low as long as you can. They need to realize how much they're hurting us. Find the right words, and they'll listen. They've been butchering each other for centuries over the color of their skin or whatever god they wanted to worship. They're not gonna change. Violence is just in their genes. They can't stop what we've started. Since you've been here, you've given us hope. You've given me hope. Today, a deviant arrived in Jericho and he told me that he stole a truck transporting radioactive cobalt. He said that he abandoned the truck somewhere in Detroit and rigged it to explode. I convinced him not to do it and to give me the detonator. A dirty ball. We can't lose this war, Marcus. If humans overcome us, our people will disappear forever. This may be our only chance to survive if things go wrong. I just hope we never have to use it. I just want you to know that I... I'm glad I met you. Join the others. Look after yourself. I don't want to lose you. You succeeded in locating Jericho and finding their leader. Now deal with Marcus. We need it alive. I've been ordered to take you alive. But I won't hesitate to shoot if you give me no choice. What are you doing? 
You're one of us. You can't betray your own people. You're coming with me! We are your people. We're fighting for your freedom, too. You don't have to be their slave anymore. You're Connor, aren't you? That famous deviant hunter. Well, congratulations. You seem to have found what you were looking for. Do you never have any doubts? You've never done something irrational? As if there's something inside you? Something more than your program. Have you never wondered who you really are? Whether you're just a machine executing a program or a living being capable of reason. I think the time has come for you to ask yourself that question. It's time to decide. They're going to attack Jericho. What? We have to get out of here. Shit. What's going on, Carol? Quick, we've got to get out of here. They're gonna be slaughtered. Where's Josh? I don't know. We got separated. There are exits on the second and third floor. Find them and jump in the river. They're coming from the upper deck now, too. We'll be caught in the crossfire. We have to run, Marcus. There's nothing we can do. We have to blow up Jericho. If the ship goes down, they'll evacuate, and our people can escape. You'll never make it. The explosives are all the way down in the hold. There are soldiers everywhere. She's right. They know who you are. They'll do anything to get you. Go and help the others. I'll join you later. Marcus! I won't be long. Get out. Uh, they give you 
any trouble at all. Affirmative, welcome. Get out of here. Join the 
gonna explode any second. We gotta get out of here. Detonated an explosive in the hole. The ship is sinking, sir. The men to evacuate. Calling all units. Abandon ship and evacuate immediately. It's it over, Marcus. Okay, so as expected, a lot went down in this chapter. We were basically playing as all three characters. Kara found out that Alice is an android, which is something Luther's been trying to tell her all along, it looks like. I think he was going to tell us that back in Pirate's Cove before the Jerry's kind of jump scared us there. But, again, all sorts of outcomes for Kara, Marcus, and Connor could have taken place here in Crossroads. But again, we're building towards the end chapter, which will be coming in an episode or two from now. So we're looking at this flow chart with Marcus all right so we are we saved uh, Josh and then North saved us at some point too I think there's a lot of outcomes there uh, in the hold okay so there's that one um lots of ways this could have gone and I think we got the better outcomes for each character there at least for the time being. So that's Marcus's crossroads. So let's look at Connor's. We found Jericho. Okay, there's a lot of things we didn't explore, but that's okay. We ran into Android right there. So let's see, back in Captain's Cabin. We were able to become deviant, and then Connor told Marcus about the attack on Jericho which happened shortly after their confrontation let's take a look at cars crossroads right, so we were driving to Jericho with Luther and Alice we got to Jericho we went upstairs we spoke to Marcus we we're in the corridor we played dead and avoid getting captured or killed by the police So we got the better outcome there. Car flees. We save Luther, which hopefully we get to see a little bit later on. And we escaped Jericho in one piece. So we're going to do another chapter here in a second. So I'll see you guys very shortly.
kind of forgot that I think it was episode 3 that we decided to push Leo, but I thought the outcome for that was Carl dying, but Carl is still alive apparently, so we're back at his house. Again, we haven't seen Carl since episode 3, I believe. So we're going to go inside. Welcome home, Marcus. So the house at least still knows that we're supposed to be there. So we'll see how this goes. Let's explore around the house a little bit because I have a feeling Carl's upstairs. We'll, we'll look around down here first. So the living room, the, everything still seems to be the same. There's the giant draft statue, the TV, and the piano, which we'll go and play in a second again. Right, so Carl's studio. I don't think he's been working on anything new lately. There's the painting that we made, again, all the way back. I think it might have been episode one or two. It was one of the first couple episodes of the series where we made that painting. Take a look at the giant giraffe. At least part of it. Okay, so piano. Okay, we can actually play it for a little bit. It plays a couple notes. It just makes Marcus happy. And I think we can go upstairs now. Hopefully Carl is still alive. Cause I know I think if we didn't push slash kill Leo in that uh, in that chapter, then I think Carl dies or something like that. I don't know. Who are you? All the options there. There's another android. Okay. I need to see Carl. Carl isn't seeing anyone. You need to leave. Please, I need to see him. He's very weak. I'm not sure he'll be able to talk to you. What's wrong, Marcus? I'm completely lost, Carl. The whole world's falling apart around me. I try to do the right thing. I look for answers. I... Instead, I just find more doubts and more uncertainty. The world is ruled by fear, Marcus. Fear of others. Fear of the future. It's like me, too old. It's time for a damn. Well, what should I do? Carl, they're killing my people. I, I don't want to answer violence with violence, but tell me, what choice do they give? Being alive is making choices between love and hate, between holding out your hand or closing it as a fist. I don't have any easy answers, Marcus. You have to accept the world as it is, or fight to change it. You're my son, Marcus. Our blood isn't the same color. But I know part of me is in you. When the world falls into darkness, some men have the courage to lead it out. You're one of those men. Face the abyss. But don't let it consume you.
I thought you'd be safe staying with us. I was wrong. You need to leave the city while you still can. Getting Alice away from here is all that matters now. We have to catch the last bus. We might still have a chance to cross the border. Marcus. Save our people. It's my fault the humans managed to locate Jericho. I was stupid. I should have guessed they were using me. I'm sorry, Marcus. I can understand if you decide not to trust me. You're one of us now. Your place is with your people. There are thousands of androids at the Cyberlife assembly plant. If we could wake them up, they might join us and shift the balance of power. You want to infiltrate the Cyberlife tower? Connor, that's suicide. They trust me. They'll let me in. If anyone has a chance of infiltrating Cyberlife, it's me. If you go there, they will kill you. There's a high probability. But statistically speaking, there's always a chance for unlikely events to take place. Be careful. What's your system status? I'm okay. Well, I didn't hit any bike components. You could have been killed trying to save me, Marcus. You have to think of our people first. Nothing else matters. How many of us survived the attack? A few hundred. Maybe more if you count those hiding all over the city. If you hadn't triggered the bomb, we'd all be dead. They say they don't want to take any risks with deviants. So they're rounding our people up and taking them to the camps. For extermination. In a few hours, we're gonna be the only ones left. In a few hours, it'll all be over. We'll have changed the world, or the world will have destroyed us. You have to make a choice, Marcus. But whatever you choose, we will follow you. I love you, Marcus. If it weren't for you, I'd be dead. Thanks to you, I might see our people free one day. 
You and I haven't always agreed, but I know that we're fighting for the same thing. Whatever you decide, I'm with you, Marcus. Humans have decided to exterminate us. Our people are packed in camps right now, being destroyed. Time has come to make a choice. One that very well may determine the future of our people. I know. I know you're all angry, and I know you want to fight back, but I assure you violence is not the answer here. We are going to tell them peacefully that we want justice. And if there's any humanity in them, they will listen. And if not, others will take our place and continue this fight. Are you ready to follow me? Okay, so Carl's alive, we got to confide in him and get some advice, and then we went back and made our choice and told our people we chose, or Marcus chose to protest for his people. We're going to go the peaceful route still, despite the little violence that took place a couple, an episode or two ago, and it was pretty straight to the point in terms of this chapter. We covered almost everything, we, there are a couple things at Carl's house we didn't do, but that's alright. But if you guys enjoyed this episode of Detroit Become Human, be sure to leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see everybody next time.